Hey guys. Welcome to Sunday it's Summary. It's exciting I'm to watch the I'm Krista and welcome to Sunday Summary. I am starting a little late and you can probably guess why. There's a hissing in the background and that will be my radiator. It's on a timer and I didn't realize that 7 o'clock is the hour that it comes on. It should probably go off shortly. But I figure we just should start. Um, I can't tell whether I am on or not, but I will go with it and see who will be joining me live. Oh, I'm also standing up because I have given up on these lights. I've given up on the whole setup a video area in my house. It's just not working. And yeah, nothing I can do about that. So I just decided to stand. And I need to make sure that I feel like I should stop the video because this hissing sound, I'm trying to just let it go and just Keep going with my commitment and not I think feel about like I it. Stop the video because um, hi, Aaliyah. Thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. I am growing weary of these Sunday summaries. I love doing them, but I just can't figure out how to do them best. Um, oh, the earphones will cancel the noise. Hmm, hmm, where are my earphones? I wonder where my earphones are. Hold on, I think I can probably grab them. Hmm, I can probably do this. Let's see. Lord, be a fence. Be a fence. Let's see if that works. Um, Lord, be a fence. Be a fence. Let's see if that works. <laughs> Progress, not perfection. Um, yes, Aaliyah. Anyway, so I am going to stand here with my laptop in my hand and try and. Progress, not and try and do this. I actually want to sit down, but I can't. So anyway, welcome back. Oh, it made me louder and decreased the sound. Okay, good. That's better than nothing. I wish I had something to put my laptop on, but I don't. So I'll just put it over there. So anyway, welcome to the Sunday Summary. I'm Krista. David. Um, I'm an artist living and working in New York City and this is a weekly um, share on my creative entrepreneurial journey. I recently quit my day job so that I could practice um, my art full time and that started on September 2nd, 2016, so about four months ago. October, November, December, January, yes, four months ago officially. And yeah, so I just hop on every Sunday and share with you how things are going, share some tips and answer questions that people may have because there is no blog, no book, no article, no podcast that can prepare you for quitting your day job. And all of the feelings that come along with it as you're trying to set yourself up in your new profession or career or thing. So I'm sharing the uncensored version as it happens to me every week. I'm kind of, hold on a second, I need to grab something. And yeah, and answering any questions that anybody has. So, okay, I have to get a little used to the fact that I'm standing and, oh Lord, this is a lot more than I thought. I thought I was ready to resume the Sunday sun summary, 
but perhaps I should have taken a little more time to kind of prep the setup and test things out. I didn't do that. I just assumed I would, would do the same thing I had been doing for the past few months, sitting at my table, but then that wasn't working out when I tried to set up about an hour ago. So anyway, I'm just let it go. So, okay, what's been going on? So one of the things I wanted to talk about this week was setting intentions and goals for the new year. It's that time of the year where everybody's setting their resolutions. Oh, first I should give you the summary and then we'll get into the tip. I'm not even following my little script that I've prepared because I'm not sitting down with my computer pulled up. Anyway, so the summary. The last time we spoke was in December and I got through the holiday selling season, which was very interesting for me. I'm going to stop saying that selling fine art is hard and just say that I am figuring out how best to do that because I, if I keep saying that selling art is hard, I'm going to get discouraged and want to give up. So I'm being very mindful with my words. Oh, thank you, Aaliyah. Um, I may have to change the time of Sunday summary again because my heat is on a schedule and I think 7 o'clock is when it comes on. The Sunday summary is usually at 9 p.m. Eastern, but I just, I feel like that's too late for me. And I'm thinking that 7.30 might be the time because I hear the steam in my radiator going down um, and it's 7.15. So my guess is 7.30 might be a, a better time. So we'll try that for next week. So I got through the holiday season. It was, it was very challenging to sell actual art. But I am going to continue to work on sharing my story around my work because I think that is more helpful or most helpful. Um, people buy art for emotional reasons, not because it's something practical. <laughs> it's not something you need, like food. Um, it is, it's, I, I wouldn't want to call it a luxury item because I think there's so many price points where you can buy art. But I do think it's something additional, and it's very subjective. There are lots of places where you can buy art. There are lots of people from whom you can buy art. And part of what I need to do in my business is share more of my creative process, why I'm making it, um, and hopefully the stories that I'm telling through my art will resonate with my collectors. So I did sell some art during the holiday. I mostly sold um, the enamel pins that I made, so the art hole pin and then the crown pin. Those are very po those are very popular, and um, I actually think I'm out of art hole pins. Or maybe I have a handful left. Um, I still have a bunch of crown pins left, but the art hole ones have been very popular. I'm very grateful for that. So got through the selling season, had. Some surprises, some happy things happen, like, you know, people found me on Instagram, saw my work, purchased some originals, and it was very, very unexpected, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I am loving Insta Story. I feel like I show up there every day for the most part, and I actually thought about not doing the Facebook Live sessions instead and doing them on my Insta story, but I, I don't know if we can save videos from Insta story just yet. And at least if I do it on Facebook, I can save the videos and put them up on YouTube or put them in the archive. So we'll see if Instagram gets away where I can save my live videos. I'll probably just collapse everything over there because pretty much Instagram is my happy place. So, yeah, I got through the selling season. It was a little challenging, but made it through. I now know exactly what I need to do and when for next year, like starting my process in as early as September and working diligently through um, uh, the second week of December. I think things slow down the second week of December, third week of December. So, yeah, so anyway, it was a good season. I'm grateful. One of the things that worked really well with me, and I think this will work well with any, for you, 
or anything that you're doing, I think you got to be very clear on what your goals and intentions are for whatever you're doing and actually find a way to log the results of the goals that you have. So I think it was around December 9th when I sat down and I was making sales before then, but I was just like, okay, I want to make this amount of money by the end of December. And what I did was I wrote down every single day in my, um, I'll show it to you in my bullet journal. See another reason why I wish anyway, I'll show it to you. Um, so in my bullet journal, I wrote down all the days from December 9th through December 31st. And I literally logged each day how much money, here it is, how much money I made on each of those days. Now, that was helpful for me because I needed to get real intentional about the money that I was bringing in because now it's not like this is not a hobby like I need to make money in order to pay for my living so I decided to write down every single day how much money I, how many sales I was averaging and how close I was getting towards the stated goal that I had and I will say that I had some streaks where every day I was making sales every day and it was very very nice to sort of see that space there and then at the end of the day write in what I made and then the days when I didn't make much it made me say to myself okay what activities are you doing that's actually helping you reach your stated goal so it kind of kept in the forefront of my mind okay Krista you have this goal and in my case it was a financial goal and then it was like, well, what activities are you doing in order to meet that? Are you sending out newsletters? Are you on social media? Are you sharing with people? Because people are busy and they just need to be reminded about what it is you're offering. And you have to just forget about this whole, oh, I'm bugging them. I'm selling too much. No, you have a goal. <laughs> this is how it goes down. <laughs> you need to remind people because they're busy and you need to do whatever you have to do to make your goal. So in the end, I ended up exceeding my goal by, I think at least $350 I exceeded my goal, which was awesome. Um, and then I noted the activities that I was doing and the things that were working. And it's not the things that you think. Actually, I can't really figure out what it was. I know there were some days when I was very active on social media and I think that helped. But then there are other days where I can't figure out what happened exactly. So, but I kept record of the sales that week. I kept record of my activities for that day just so that I can have this log of like, okay, and possibly figure out what the pattern is and what I can sort of replicate for the next time around. And the days when I didn't make any money, I had to face the fact that, Christy, you're not doing what you need to do. And that's just not acceptable. In fact, when I exceeded my goal, I actually just stopped working for the last week and a half of December, which is okay, but not when you're just starting out. I feel like I really need to be upping my productivity because I have a lot of ground that I need to cover in a short amount of ta time because I'm just starting out and I don't have all of my systems in place to kind of keep things going when I shut down for a vacation or a mental health day or whatever. But I say all that to say that the thing that I think worked is setting your intention and your goal around what it is you want to have happen and having a physical place where you can log the results of that thing. And the having the physical place where you can log the results and your activities is going to keep you accountable personally and I think mentally it's kind of like having um no it's not like having a vision board it's literally like having a goals list and so that worked really really well for me and I'm going to continue to do that in fact I just finished um, planning um, doing my vision boards for the 
you know, they're, they're not all finished, but they're in progress. If you follow me on Instagram, you, um, you can take a look at them on Insta story, but now it's time for me to sit down and say, okay, what are my financial goals for the month? I made my financial goals for the quarter and I talked to my accountability buddies about that. And I feel like it's on the low side and that could just be me feeling like there's, it's a challenge to sell art, but, um, I feel like it's some, it's, I'm comfortable with the number and I just, my goal is every quarter to increase that number. So the goal that I have for the, for quarter one of the new year, just to be very transparent, I just simply want to sell $4,000 worth of art. It's not a lot of money, right? Um, and it certainly isn't a lot of money considering to what I was making before, um, before I quit my day job. But I think for where I am, as far as my art business, it is a good goal. Um, and a, definitely an improvement over the third quarter of 2016. So the goal is to sell $4,000 worth of art. And that's just art. That's not, um, money that I'll make selling other items like mugs or t-shirts or things like that. It's mainly just my original art and then reproductions of my art. So my paintings, my collages, and then this month I'm opening a print shop where I'll have a number of prints that you can buy. So basically they're going to be fine art, um, G. Clay reproductions of my original work. And when you buy G. Clay prints, they are basically high quality inkjet prints um, via a commercial printer. They're beautiful and they're affordable. So my hope is that I can sell a combination of original art and then a bunch of these fine art prints in the first quarter. So that's my goal. And then as far as other money, um, I'm also teaching at NYU this semester. It's not a whole lot of money, but I agreed to do it. So that starts on January 24th and it goes through May. So that's the money. And then I have made another thing that I'm tracking every week is the number of contacts that I make that can either line up art sales or public health consulting work. So I had four new contacts this past week. Two of them are public health um, related. And then two of them are one is art related. Wait, is one art related? I think one is art. Yes, one is art related. And then the other one is um, someone reached out to me about doing some social media managing, that kind of thing, which I'm still considering. But um, yeah, so I'm tracking all of that. So now that we're in 2017, I've set my goals around my financial quarter one. But I've also set my intention for the year, sort of like this word that I want to anchor myself with. Um, I don't know who else is on or teach. Yes, I consult, Aaliyah, and I'm trying to do more consulting. I just haven't, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. And I think I shared this in a newsletter. And I think I also shared it on a video. You know, there are times when I just feel so burnt out by public health work and I just need a little bit of space in between it and I need to have the right consulting project because because of the previous experience that I had or the most recent experience, there are just certain things that I don't want to be bothered with. Um, I want to go in and add value. I know exactly how I can help people. I know exactly where my expertise lie. And I just want to work with a group that is ready to accept what I'm offering or and or um, we can come to a, a, a mutually um, a mutual agreement about what is possible at this particular time, because I get that not all organizations are running efficiently and effectively. So I can't have that expectation that people are actually doing what they need to do and there's a clear vision and all that jazz but I do want to be clear that I just don't want to have certain kinds of stresses in my life so people need to be it just needs to be a right the right fit um 
or it needs to be so um, contract and deliverable based that I don't, I can turn my mind off. And when I say turn my mind off, it's like, this is what I'm going to produce for you. Whatever you want to do with it, you can do with it. Whether you want to use it, you can, whatever. But that's just a, another situation. I'm slowly getting more comfortable with the idea of doing more public health consulting. I just want it to be a good fit because I don't want to waste my time and I don't want, and I just want, I just want, yeah, I don't want to waste my time. So, but the teaching thing is happening again. I'm t- I picked up this public health teaching gig again. I was just lamenting the other day that I probably agreed to it at a time when I didn't fully realize how much time I would need to focus on building my business. So when I had to take some time off to prepare for this class, I was complaining because I was just like, this is not the time that I want to divert my attention. And, um, you know, it is what it is. So I was a little ungrateful (laughs) about the opportunity. I think I'm warming up to it now because I'm just like, listen, I'm going to do this. May will be here before you know it. And I think it'll help me as far as setting up some structure in my week. So I'll be teaching two nights a week, Tuesday and third, Tuesday and Wednesday. I think it's from six to eight or like six to seven forty five or something, something like that. What I'm going to do for those days, those are going to be like my writing days, days when I'm developing written content. So whether that's writing newsletters, blog posts, my blog, Crown Blog, um, um, developing um, workbooks, worksheets, those sorts of things. Those will be days that I'll, I'll do writing. Monday will be admin slash art making. And then Thursday and Friday and Saturday art making. So I'm just going to be grateful, get up on Tuesday morning, do my morning rituals, do a little collaging, sketching or whatever, get dressed, go to NYU and find some place where I can be, write, and then go teach my class and then bring myself home or go to happy hour. That's another good thing about teaching. It'll get me out of the house and it'll get me back in sort of interacting with other professionals after work. So you know, I complained about it for a little bit, but I think it's going to be a really good experience. So yeah, so that's what's going on. So back to these intentions and goals. If you read my blog last week at kristadavid.com, click on blog at the top. I wrote about what my word is for 2017. I'm just checking the time. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to be on for too long. My, I haven't picked a word to kind of be my intention. I haven't done this in like four or five years. I feel like I need something more now than ever um, because this is a very emotional journey for me. Like it's been really emotional up and down and around town. So the word that came to me after a lot of praying um, was steady. So steady is my word for the year. And if you go over to the blog, you can read the three definitions attached to that word. Um, But it basically, the essence of it is just uh, unmovable, no matter what is happening. Like I want to be right in the middle, whether amazing things are happening or tragic things are happening. I want to be completely steady and sort of not just taking still taking everything in with gratitude and not with a grain of salt, but taking it all in with gratitude, but not being too crazy when things go really bad, that it distracts me for what I still need to do in order to ensure that the next day and the next day and the next day I see improvements or, and, or being steady enough that when things are going incredible, that my head is not all swollen and, um, resting on any laurels or that kind of thing. I want to be right in the middle and I want to be so focused on what do I need to do right at this moment? What is the thing that I need to be focused on? The reason why that's important to me is because I struggle with procrastination, mainly because I've struggled with perfectionism most of my life. And when things aren't perfect or up to your standard, you want to not do it or be involved or check out that kind of thing. 
So my thing is I have to I have to be in committed action all the time and it has to be a steady action. So that means day in and day out, I need to be doing the things, not the 19 things, but maybe the two or three things that I have to do every day to ensure sure that I'm going to make my weekly goals, monthly goals, quarterly goals, and annual goals. So steady is my word. You can check, you can go read more about it. I would love to hear if you've picked a word for the year. Oh, <laughs> let me know if you picked a word for the year. I am, st- thank you so much, Aaliyah. I think I would have probably logged off if you weren't here telling me to stay on. <laughs> um, so let me know if you picked a word for the year. I would love to hear more about how you intend to have that word be your anchor and whether or not you've had to lean into that word already. I know we're like just at the beginning of the year is January 8th, but I feel like I've had to lean into my word already because, you know, things have been challenging. Um, Every day there's some other (sighs) challenge that I have to figure out. And, um, I will say that the thing that has happened that I didn't, I mean, I figure it would come up eventually, but it has come up and it's coming up more often than not now is this idea of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go get a day job. Um, And it scares me a little bit, but I've been talking to a lot of artists lately and the pattern that I've been hearing is that one, they all have jobs. I have yet to talk to an artist who is a full-time artist who does not have a job. (laughs) Part-time job or a full-time job. Many of them have full-time jobs. Um, I just, actually, no, let me take that back. I just spoke to an artist two days ago and she is completely full-time and she has like a long-term collaboration with the organization now that she's doing a bunch of commission pieces for. And, but she just recently quit her part-time job and now she is full-time. So I realized that it's not something that a lot of people do. And I don't know, maybe I was just sort of in La La Land and fairy tale land thinking that, oh, you know, I'll, it'll be different for me, <sighs> but we'll see. I'm still committed to this year. Um, I'm not interested in looking for any kind of full-time job right now. I am going to start looking for opportunities where I can travel and work um, because that sounds very enticing to me. So if you know of anything, please let me know. I want to go anywhere. Oh, I want to go to Morocco, Cuba, Thailand, South Africa, places where I can go and possibly use my public health skills to work while I, or use my art teaching skills to work. So I'm going to be looking for opportunities to do that. Um, short term, long term, you know, couple weeks, couple months, a year, it doesn't matter. I'm open to almost anything right now. So that's where I am. That's my summary. I encourage you to get a goal or get an intention Have your goals flow from your intention and then track. You have to track. You have to write these things down. If you don't, if you don't look at them every day, what am I, what specifically am I trying to create? How many by when? So dates are important. Measurable outcomes are important. And then you need to assess, am I doing the right activities to get me to where I want to, want to be? And for me right now, a lot of my goals are around business related stuff. I also have some health goals that I'm working towards and it's not about losing pounds and inches. It's mainly about having enough energy and mental clarity in order to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. And I totally understand why people, when they start working for themselves, start doing crazy stuff after a while. They not crazy, but they start things like They have a deep yoga practice. Now they're a vegan. Now they're running. Now I totally get it because when you spend your entire day by yourself behind the computer and you do that for three months, four months, 
you start to like lose your mind and you really realize that you need a lot more mental clarity and focus. So then the first thing to kick in is like, I got to get my health in order. I have to get my physical fitness in order. So it's less about, oh, I want to be beach ready. It's more about, I need mental clarity and I need to have focus. My meditation practice is helping tremendously. Um, thanks to the Headspace app, but I need to start getting in more physical activity. So I do have health, you know, goals around that because I can, I can see that helping me just run a better business and build a better business. So get you an intention, get those goals flowing from your intention, get a way to track them. Okay. Okay. Um, Yeah, so that's it. That's the Sunday summary. Oh, let me see if there are any questions. Yes, Aaliyah, you're right. So I'm glad you brought that up. Aaliyah mentioned that the job is just financing. I wonder if it helps to think about it that way. You're right. So I had someone say to me, I think it was my accountability buddy, um, Monique, say that she was like, just see that job as your investor. And I was like, that's a good point. I will tell you that part of me felt like, why couldn't I hang in there with my previous day job? Um, Why didn't I have, or why wasn't I open to that idea before I quit my job? Like, why didn't I just, and there were people telling me like, hey, don't worry, just go to work. Do what you need to do and leave. But I think personally for me, because of the position that I was in, it was a senior level position. I'm in charge of teams of people and I just felt too much responsibility to just be punching a clock. Some jobs you can do that where it's like, no, you're not responsible for anybody but yourself and your to-do list and it's very basic I didn't have one of those jobs and I just I just assumed uh I had a, a greater level of responsibility so I could not treat it a certain way. And I mean I know other people could but just I wasn't I'm not built that way. So, I think if I do go back to work, I really have to be very very careful and clear on what it is I am signing up for if I'm just going to see it as an investor. Um, my public health career is, it was just, it was just too hard to think about it that way, but I I do see the point. Um, so we'll see what happens. We will see what happens in the next couple months. Um, I think the good thing about this year and trying to set myself up and really be clear about my practice, art practice is that it's helping me just get into the groove of making work and helping me find my um, artistic voice. So that in the event that I have to go back to a full-time job and I'm back to making art on the weekends and the evenings, I'm very clear about my process and like how to get in to my studio, make my work, I'll have, you know, my networks and my mechanisms already set up to show and sell my work. So, you know, we'll see. I don't want to think about that right at this moment, but uh, yeah, like I said, every artist that I've I've met so far, for the most part, they have jobs. (laughs) They have jobs. So, yeah. Okay, so I am going to leave it at that and... Yes, it did. It cost way too much. Oh, thank you so much, Aaliyah. I appreciate all of your coaching and encouragement. Um, Yes, and leave your website in the comments, Aaliyah, so people can find you. Aaliyah is a top-notch coach, and she um, is passionate about helping women like me who are trying to, like, you know, make better lives or at least create the lives that they want. So, okay, that is the Sunday summary. I will be back next week. I will probably try to find a bar stool or something so that I can sit down. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. 
and I will catch you next week. Be sure to check out the archives at www.kristadavid.com and you just click on the events tab at the top and the Sunday summary will pop up and you can see all of the previous videos and you can also check out my work while you're over there. And yeah, so that is it. Until next week. Bye.